In today's episode, we are going to cover the different types of loops in GameMaker Studio 2. The first thing I want to cover is why would you need loops? Loops are something that allow you to run code over and over and over. And there's a lot of cases in programming where you need to, to, to loop over, say, an array, which we'll get to in a future episode, um, that stores information about your inventory or different health elements. But basically, you have a need to look at something over and over, check for something, and then do something with that information. It would be really, really hard to program games without loops. I have an example here right now. And right here, what I have is I have a statement that's repeated five different times. And all it is, uh, we're not going to focus on the specific statement and what it means, but the summary is it's going to add our player object, which if I look at our objects here, object player, it's going to add this red square to the screen in a random X and Y location five different times. So we could actually run this. Uh, let me go to the rooms. I'm going to show you one extra thing. Uh, I have changed this room properties to be 500 by 500 uh, width and height. And we need to place this object that I created called object loops onto the screen. If I go back to the workspace, object loops is just an object that I created for this tutorial that has a create event. And so we're in the create event and we're going to create these five player objects within that room. All right, so it created five different objects um, in random locations in the room. So that's exactly what we we're expecting. But when you're really getting into programming, let's close, this way, close that window so we get more space here. When we really get into programming, you can't do it this way. You can't manually create these five instances. You may actually have code that says, I need to create six instances or 10 instances. So what we're gonna do is we're going to close. I'm going to delete all that. I've got all the code ready here, so we don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to show you a quick trick. Uh, I showed you guys comments in uh, earlier videos. And if you want to quickly uncomment something, you hit Control Shift K and that uncomments it. If you hit Control K without the shift, it comments it back. So Control Shift K to uncomment and Control K to comment a block of code like that. All right, so we're going to start with a repeat statement. A repeat statement is the simplest of the loops. It takes one input parameter, basically, is the number of times to repeat something. You tell it five, it's going to repeat this statement within these two brackets five times. Or if you have a bunch of other code that's setting other variables, it's going to repeat all of that five or five times. You can also do something like this, say i equals five, not minus. And instead of passing in a hard number, you can say I. So now we have this, and it's going to do the same exact thing as we saw in the last code. It's going to create five instances of that player object in the screen. So exactly the same. All right. So that's the repeat statement. You just need to repeat something however many times you put that number in there or put the variable and repeat the statement, and it'll run all the code in between. I'm right, going to move quickly. We're just going to go ahead and go right into the next statement, which is the while loop. I'm going to uncomment this and show you, walk you guys through this. So I've got a similar structure. I have i equals zero here, but this is the focus of the statement. You have while and something in parentheses, very similar to the repeat statement, but instead of a number, it's a statement that's going to be true or false. So as long as the statement is true, which we're going to say i is less than 10 in this case. That's true. The first time we run it, it's going to run everything in the brackets. And then we're going to show debug message. This is a built-in game maker function that will actually output um, information into this output screen here. And I'm going to show you that guys that in just a second. Uh, the string i just converts the number into text. So it'll show up as text down here. And then last, if we don't actually do anything with i, it's going to stay zero, and this is going to be an infinite loop, and it will crash GameMaker and your application. So be very careful with these. You can cause infinite loops. So in this case, we're going to make i equal to i plus 1. So the next time it goes around, it, instead of zero, it's going to be 1. That's still less than 10. Do that over and over and over until it gets to 10. And once it hits 10, this is no longer true it's gonna get out of this loop and move on to other code. Let's run it. Okay, 
So we got our little window here. Nothing shows up because we're not actually adding instances, but if you look down here, and I know it's small, I'll see if I can increase this after the recording. Uh, zero through nine uh, is showing up. So this all gets spit out into the, the input window. So I'm gonna close that. Um, so the reason it showed nine is because once we hit 10, so nine worked, nine is less than 10, that's true. It's gonna write it, it's gonna do everything within these brackets, but once we hit 10, this is false, so it does not run anything in here. So you gotta be careful when you're doing that because oftentimes you're gonna want to do something like a greater than or equal to, which in that case, this, this still would have been true and it would have actually written out 10. Right, let's go ahead and move on to the next statement. We're gonna move on from while and we're gonna cover do until. Let's uncomment this, do until. All right, so this is kind of the opposite of while in the fact that it's you're telling it to do this statement within these brackets, run this until this statement is true. So as long as the statement is false, um, it's gonna continue looping through this. So in this case, I've set up i equals zero again, show, same code here to show the debug message, i equals i plus one. And until i equals nine, as long as it's basically less than 10, as long as it's less than 10, it's gonna run this. So let's, let's prove that real quick too. All right, zero through eight. Oh, I should say, uh, as long as it's less than nine, because as soon as this is true here, until this is true, once that's true, it's not gonna run the code again, it's gonna jump right out. So be aware of that as well. All right, so do the code until this is true. We're gonna qu quickly move on. So I think you guys get it. And the last one that we're gonna cover as far as loops is the for loop. Now this is the most interesting one. So let's uncomment this one and let me walk you through it. The for loop can trip people up because it starts to look confusing. In fact, I'm gonna write it down here just to kind of go over it separately. So for, and then you're gonna see something comma, you're gonna see this parentheses. All right, so there's there's three parts to the, well actually four parts to the the, the for loop. The first is, the setup, this is what gets it started. So let's talk about that, i equals zero. So up in those other cases, we were doing i equals zero before it, but this actually constructs it right into this parentheses. So this gets run one time, the first time this for loop gets started. We say i is equal to zero. Okay, so now it's set up. The next part is the check. Okay, so the next part checks. Every time the, the loop happens, it's checking for this condition. Is i less than 10? If it is, it's gonna run everything in this code. Okay, so now the next thing that actually happens before this last statement over here is it actually runs the statement. So if i equals 10, it's gonna run the show debug message string um, i. But you'll notice down here, we don't have the statement i equals i plus one. That's what the last statement is, and it's the increment. So it's adding the i equals i plus one. And this is a new thing I wanna show you guys. This is an incrementer. Basically it's i plus plus is the same thing as i equals i plus one. So i plus plus means add one to, to i. So if this was, uh, true, and after this gets run, it then goes up here and adds one to it. So that's pretty confusing, but um, that's pretty standard in programming languages. Set this up the first time, do a check. If this is false, or, or if it's true, run the statement, then run the incrementer. The thing to know about this is we could actually do, we can work our way backwards. So we could actually do a minus minus to subtract and we could say um, i equals 10, start off with 10. And if i is greater than zero, you can actually work your way down from 10 to, to zero. So you could do all that. Let's uh, put everything back the way we had it. So let's run this one real quick. It should be exactly the same as everything else that we were running and working just smoothly. Okay, 
So here we go. We've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just like all the other ones. So that's a for loop. Okay, so that's the four different types of loops that we have in GameMaker. They're all very powerful. Um, a lot of the ones that I tend to use, uh, I tend to use repeat and the for loop a lot in my games. Um, I have used the the while and the do until, but I tend to be able to use the the other two quite often to achieve what I need to do. All right, the last thing I want to show you is these two statements and how they fit into loops, the break and continue. So we'll start off with the break. The break is a statement you, you can stick in any of those loops, the, the repeat, the, the, the while, the do until, and the for loop to stop going through the loop. So you could do something like this. You can say, if, if I is equal to five, break okay and what this is saying is if this equals to five stop the loop and move on so you may have something in here where you want to you're looping through an array of maybe hundreds of items and once you find what you're looking for you don't need to go through the loop anymore so all you have to do for that is you check for it and you break so instead of going to all the way to zero through nine when i run this it's actually going to stop at five. So there you go, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's what the break does. Now in the case with continue, and again, you can use break in all of the other loops. Let's talk about continue. So I'm gonna take this out. Let's pretend we had other debug messages. And we said, hi, every time this looped around. And let's copy that and we had a buy. Okay. So we have a high and a buy. When we run this right now, what's going to happen is there's going to be th now three lines for every one of these 10. So it's going to go zero, high, buy, one, high, buy, so on and so forth. Yep. There we go. I'm going to drag this up a little bit. So as you can see, zero, high, buy, one, high, buy, so on and so forth. Now let's say we got to a condition where we didn't want to stop the loop, but there's certain conditions we want to just skip some logic and continue on through the loop. That's where the continue statement works. So the way you do that is we would say, let's, let's say if we'll do the same thing, if I equals to five, we're going to continue. Okay. Let's run that. And what should happen is when it hits this, it's not going to run the rest of this. It's going to skip over this code and continue back into the, the rest of the for loop. Okay, so we got zero high by, one high by, two high by, three, four, five, and then six is skip the high by, six high by, so on and so forth. So I think that, that shows you how that works. You hit the, the condition, you continue, skips the rest of the code, but continues in the loop. So that was what we we're gonna cover today. So that's everything you need to know about loops um, and how to break out of them and how to continue on uh, in, in a loop, but skipping some logic. These are very powerful. You're going to find lots of ways that you can use these in your games. So hopefully this is pretty helpful. All right, guys. So that's it for today. Um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.